Today I'm going to talk about how to spot somebody that I might call somebody who is fake conscious. Fake conscious. Because there's a lot of people who choose to call themselves as being a part of the conscious community, but there's not very many people who really know a lot of what they're talking about because a lot of the most outspoken people are very misled, which is a pretty common thing on earth, it seems. So I just wanted to give a few different ways for you to be able to spot somebody you might not be able to trust and characteristics of somebody that you could probably trust what they're saying. So I'm gonna put in two different categories. I'm gonna call one category fake conscious and the other category is gonna be real deal conscious. So first of all, you spot somebody who's fake conscious they're probably going to try to hit you with some kind of philosophy that they heard somewhere and they're not necessarily going to have original thought. So if they have some kind of religious perspective, and when I say religions, I'm not necessarily even talking about somebody who practices a religion. Now, of course, if somebody's practicing a religion, that's obviously they're being influenced by a doctrine that was designed by somebody else. Their thoughts are being influenced by somebody else. Their lifestyle is being influenced by commands made by somebody else a book that was written or what have you so obviously somebody who is dealing with outdated philosophies that's going to be the same concept so if somebody's religious when i say religious i just mean somebody who does something in great longevity and consistently you know if you do something religiously you're doing it constantly so if they're constantly referring back to the same text or the same philosophy for example um if if we're looking at the laws of maya right okay so everybody could read that and say okay these seem like some pretty ethical principles that we could adopt to live a better lifestyle and whatnot and that could be true but if you're living your entire life based off of what that says and you're using that as your point of reference for how to live that's still a religious way of living your life which is not the wisest way to do it because the truth is you really want to get to know yourself you're going to have to look within and figure out what sits right with you because something that might sit right with this person might not necessarily be what you agree with because of course we're all supposed to be free thinkers and have our own different perspectives so you got to watch out for that kind of fake conscious person because they might have good intentions but they don't know that they're not necessarily promoting the right kind of ways of living so that's just one um they if they have just one source, that's like the worst kind of religious person. Though. If they got one source, the person who maybe, if they're a Christian, they only read the Bible and they think that's the only thing. And the funny thing is with people who are big on Christianity, I find that a lot of people who are big on it, they never even read the entire book. So they'll come across somebody like me and they'll try to argue religion. I never start these arguments, but if we're arguing about religion or whatever, and I mention to them, I read that book and there's a lot of things in that book that I don't agree with and then I'll give a few examples for example how it talks about slavery and how slaves should obey their masters and be submissive to them or how it talks about how children or women female children for example it'll say that a man can choose any woman or any female for his liking because of course that book is very chauvinistic and it's very clear that that book is chauvinistic because It'll say that the man can have whatever woman he wants, but it doesn't even necessarily say that the woman has to be willing to go with him. It just says he can take her. So back in those days, it was pretty messed up. But anyways, to stay on subject, you have to make sure that you're dealing with a kind of person who is very well put within themselves and they're not always having to refer to a text that was written how long ago, we, we don't really know, but it's been rewritten many, many times. So you got to watch out for people who only got one source. If you got one source, that one source needs to be yourself. So that's just giving a few examples of people, those fake conscious people. But clearly, they're more about having something external to attach to, which shows how spiritually immature they are. Because they're not very experienced in being able to get the answers from the true source because they're not looking in the right direction. They're trying to find something external. They're trying to find a book to read or something when it really, you don't need the instructions on how to live. You're supposed to live through your own inner wisdom and experience. So when you 
use your intuition and you feel what you're supposed to do, you feel what's right or what's not right, and that's how you're supposed to be living your life. And of course, you can always learn from the mistakes of others, or not necessarily even mistakes, but the decisions that others made before you, you can definitely learn from that. So those type of people, they often try to recruit or influence other people. They, this is usually the loudest guy in the room, <laughs> which is the funny thing. But if somebody's real deal conscious, they usually don't really feel the need to prove themselves or prove that they know what they know. But I find that a lot of people who are what I call fake conscious, they feel the need to always try to recruit more people to come along with them. Like, hey, let me be the leader. Hey, listen to me. I have the answers. This is the way to enlightenment and all that, man. There's not just one way to enlightenment. There are, though, when you're dealing with real deal conscious people, there is very, very common things that uh, that philosophies or habits that a lot of enlightened people have. So, for example, now I'm talking about the real deal conscious. Real deal conscious people are always going to make sure that they're taking care of themselves first. It's not even a selfish thing necessarily in a negative connotation, but they're not going to burn themselves out on trying to make sure that they're satisfying other people because they're not living through the ego necessarily so or not as much so if somebody's living through their ego and they're always trying to keep up the way that somebody thinks about them they're trying to keep up with the wrong things somebody who's real deal conscious is going to be content in who they are and it's like look this is me take it or leave it this is what i got to say i'm probably not going to argue about what i got to say and oftentimes the real deal conscious people find that it's not even necessarily worth the time in trying to prove a point to somebody. If you see that somebody's so far behind, some people are just too far gone. You just gotta accept them for who they are and let them believe what they wanna believe. But being real deal conscious, that third eye's gotta be open. So you know you can believe somebody if they can give you many examples of the different supernatural abilities that they have. So if they give examples of how they can communicate with spirits, or their intuition is very, very strong. And they know how to deal with people when it comes to feeling their frequencies and their energies and being able to sense stuff before it happens, knowing how to have that outstanding behavior. That outstanding behavior isn't something that can be taught. So you're not gonna learn in a book how to be an outstanding person. Naturally, if you read their conscious, people are gonna wanna know what you have to say anyways, because they know they're dealing with somebody who's wise. So they want to hear you. They're gonna encourage you to talk more if you're real deal conscious. So depending on how far along you are on your spiritual journey though, you're going to naturally be able to activate different frequencies within your mind and your being to where you can access these different dimensions and stuff. So somebody who's real deal conscious is gonna know all about astral travel, astral projection. They're gonna have probably plenty of stories to tell about what they've experienced. Now, lucid dreaming is another thing being able to control your dreams that says a lot about somebody and how powerful they have become within knowing their own abilities because most people have too many fears to even be able to get out of their body and travel and bring their consciousness out of them their body and go into another dimension in the astral projection but if somebody is able to consciously do that consistently it shows that they already have a lack of fears if they don't have if they do have a few fears they don't have very many at all but the truth is whenever you get out of your body if you have any fear whatsoever at least from my experience every time i get out of my body if i even think about this realm again boom i snap back into my body I, but that's another subject for another time because i'm gonna have to make plenty of other videos talking about astral travel and, and astral projection but to make sure that you know that the person you're dealing with is real deal conscious, you can ask them a few questions just to test the waters and see how far along they are. So if they don't necessarily know anything about outside of this realm, if they're not aware of their existence in other dimensions, you're probably dealing with somebody who's not very spiritually developed. They can definitely get there if, they're, if they've got the curiosity to find out about these things. But if somebody is fake conscious, they're going to tell other people about astral projection, astral travel, even though they don't have any experience themselves. They're going to tell people to do certain things like meditate, but they might not even necessarily meditate. 
get what I'm saying? <laughs> it's not even respectable. If somebody is real deal conscious, they're not even going to feel the need to drag a lot of people into what they're into. But when somebody does approach and they are genuinely curious, somebody who's real deal conscious is going to guide them. It's going to be clear, though, the difference between somebody who wants to be your leader and somebody who is just willing to coach you. Because the people who come up to me and they ask me on what are some things that I could help them with, they ask me what they should do to advance themselves. Because I find that oftentimes people come to me when they have the curiosity, but they feel like they hit a ceiling where they don't know how to get to that next level. They don't know how to get to the fifth, sixth, even fourth dimension sometimes. So I'm the person to go, okay, well, let me just tell you this. This is how I did it, but this isn't necessarily the only way to do it. But here's what I did. And I'll tell them about making sure I take care of my diet because I find that anytime that I'm taking in too many toxins or eating too much meat, it's gonna be a lot harder to be able to take care of yourself because your body's gonna be so distracted. It's gonna be a lot harder for your mind to be able to concentrate and go into these other realms and you're not going to be very high vibrational because you're gonna be eating low vibrational foods. It's gonna keep you down here. Now, of course, once you've activated the astral projection frequencies, you can do it whenever you want, anytime you want. But if you haven't even activated the Kundalini energy yet, you're gonna to have to work hard on eliminating your bad habits and your attachments. Being able to recognize them is the biggest key. But a lot of people can recognize what their issue is, what their biggest attachments are, but they can't let it go. Letting go of those attachments, that's something that any real deal conscious person is going to preach. <laughs> preach. So you gotta make sure that you, one, can acknowledge what your weaknesses are, and two, be willing to let go of what it is you're attached to and really care enough about your progress to stop doing stuff if you know you're not supposed to be doing it or start doing things if you know you should be doing them. It's simple enough, right? You know, be mature, grow up, responsibility. You gotta be able to be accountable within yourself because in this thing called life right here, people can give you all the advice in the world, but it doesn't mean anything if you don't know how to apply it.